of having some resource. All right, screen share, and we'll go desktop. Okay, cool. And if it maximized and you can't get it out of it, you should be able to hit escape and it should move away from it. Yep. Awesome, cool. Okay, so now I kind of have it open and we're gonna go up here to the top left and we're gonna click on add. And now you can open any sort of STL, STL file that you may have. You, um, if you have a certain model you kind of want to put in here and kind of look at, then you're welcome to do that. Um, it looks like I kind of just have some of our generic models from like the A5 printer. And that's going to be really tiny and small on this thing. So let's go ahead and hit cancel on that. We'll go to file. And they have actual examples. So if we go to file and we go to examples, there's a whole bunch of different things in here that kind of like help either calibration or fam covers or, you know, it kind of gives you like different things that you can use. So one thing for our first print, we can go ahead and click on this V2 hot end installation tool. And so this is actually a nice tool. Like if you tear apart the extruder and you're trying to use something for it, this will actually help to uh, line it all up so you have it correct. So it has a little notch here for the, um, that's going to be for the heat sink. And then this is going to be where the heating block is. And then this is going to be your final nozzle area. So this kind of just helps for the shape. And it's a good little first print for us to kind of go through. So this interface is kind of like Cura because we, we have gone through that before, right? Right. So, you know, you're going to have a lot of selections up here in the top. You're going to be able to pan. You're going to be able to move. Um, so panning, you're just basically going to be able to move it around kind of like so. And it moves the hand in that way. If you right click, you're going to be able to rotate. And then view is kind of the same deal. You're, you're kind of moving around different areas in order to view it. Move is going to move the object, so you can either click on the object and move it in some direction as you would please, or you can actually, you know, set the values over here or make center and make sure it's on the platform because mine actually raised up a little bit. So make center, and we should be good, right? Okay, so um, I, I got a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. On uh, I I found the I found the test models. Which one are you building right so now? So go to File, Examples, and then V2 Hotend Installation Tool. Okay. You got me? I'm there now. Sweet. Sounds good. Okay, so we have Rotate so we can transform it in the same kind of ways that Cura allows us to. This is just much of a, it's a, it's a more robust program. Um, so we also have Scale here, so we're going to be able to use that as well. So Rotate, Move, and... So one thing, if you are in pan or view, it allows you to select which extruder you want to use. And for the sake of tutorial and for your first print, the Race 3D wants you to use the left extruder first. And so you can decide a color for it. If you want a specific color for each extruder, that's something you can do. Um, but we can just leave it white and we want to make sure it's on left. Okay, so it's default printing is on the left extruder and it's going to be the primary idea. Okay, and then we have free cut, which is gonna be able to cut the model in pieces. And then we also have support structures. And so one fun thing about uh, Idea Maker is you can actually take away and add supports as you would like. So you can generate or create auto supports for whatever you may need. So this object isn't really gonna need them, but for demonstration, I can go ahead and rotate this guy and we'll make it to be, you know, some way that we would need, um, Ooh. This is a little tedious. Well, here, we can actually use these. We can just set this value, 180. Okay, and so now it's kind of like in a position that it would need supports to print, right? Right. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in here to support and I'm gonna create, I'm gonna click on the item, you have to click on the item for it, and I'm gonna create auto supports, right? And so what it did is that it kind of puts in all of the different supports that we may or may not need. And if we could just zoom in, and so notice it kind of has the supports made and it has those ready to go. But one thing that we can do here is we can set the overhang angle of how much we want it to be and kind of the size of each uh, area. But we can also click over here on manual supports and click remove. So if I click on remove and I click any of these, I can actually remove all of these supports that are right in here. So this is a way that you can edit the supports and if you don't want them in a certain area, you don't have to have them. So, you know, if we didn't want them right here in the middle, we can delete this one and this one and kind of open up an area for us, right? Right. So this is something that Cura doesn't have. You can't add and subtract supports on Cura, but this is an excellent feature that they have made and it's something you may uh, either 
already like or come to appreciate here in the near future when you're trying to make, you know, certain support functions uh, work for yourself, okay? Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all the sports here. We don't really need them. And then I'm going to rotate it back to what it used to be at. There we go. And now it should be happy, right? I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we're not so close to the object and go back to pan or move if I need to. So we can duplicate, we can reset, and then we can repair. What repair is going to do is it's actually going to, uh, basically, if there's any section that's not a closed model so that it wouldn't print correctly, it'll repair it for that, okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on here on start. Oh, sorry, we should probably connect to the printers via the network. So have you set up the network on your uh, Raise 3D? I have not. So we'll go through this process real quick here. Um, so if you actually come over here to the Raise 3D and I'm gonna stop sharing real fast and I'll show you on the on the Raise 3D here. Okay. Oops, dropping some stuff. Okay, so ha ha how we have here, we have home and this is gonna be base screen, you know, it's gonna have all your different stuff in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to uh, tune. And then we have a little setting up here. You see the cog? That's what we're looking for. We're looking to go to settings, right? And it's also here on the home screen. So you can click on this cog here. And it has machine. It has all your different variables and everything. You can restart more settings. It has a whole bunch of stuff right through here. And then, you know, you can set up a camera with it. You can have an Ethernet cable plugged into it. But the one thing that we want to do is we want to do a wireless LAN connection. So we're, we can actually put a Wi-Fi to this so that you don't have to ever have your printer hooked or your computer hooked up to your printer. You can just send it over the network and it immediately gets it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, you know, you can select whatever your printer may be. You're going to click on your network and then you'll use this pin pad in order to type in the password and then it'll link to it. So if you wanna do that for your specific network right now, that would be excellent so that we can kind of transfer our print here in a little while. So this is going to be basically all our background settings to it and um, kind of what's going on for our print. What's up? It's uh, not all, it's not connecting. So it's not, it's not connecting? Right. Um, so do, do you see the network you want to put it on? Yes. And it's, have you, did you type in the password and the, and the like? Uh, it's, it's an open one for, uh, for my classroom. It's an open uh, Wi-Fi for your own classroom? Yes. And it's just not connecting? Yes. It's, it's, uh, Hmm. What well, if that's the case, it, it might be mad that it's not a secure network. Um, it may want it to be a secure network for this. Okay, we have the secure one, and uh, I don't have the password for it. And I, I think I wrote that. What's up? We have a secure one that I could do, but I don't have the password, but I can get my IT guy. Would that be the yeah. best thing to do? Uh, yeah, see if it, see if you click on that and see if it asks for a password, if, if it's more likely to connect for us. You're cutting out a little bit. Okay, as soon as I click the secure one, it asks for the password, so I'll, gra I'll get the password real fast. Awesome. And, and put it in. Okay, that sounds good.
Okay, that was it. So yeah, I just didn't want to connect over an unsecured network. Was that correct? Yes. Okay. Good. Doing well. How are you? Pretty good. All righty. So what we're going to do next then is we're going to go. So once we had that, I'm going to share my screen again. So we're going to go over here and then we can click on connect and it should immediately show us the raise 3D as long as your computer and the uh, printer are on the same network. Okay. And so once you find that, then you can come over here and you can either bookmark it, whatever you want, but we're going to click this arrow with a little circle around it. And you can, you can tell me to hold on if you're not quite there yet. Maybe, uh, maybe hold on a second. Yeah, sure. And so one way you could kind of circumvent this is, you know, put a password on the, uh, your specific Wi-Fi you have in your room if you wanted to. Uh -huh. And that way, it, it's just mad because it wants a secure, secure connection to be on. And that's just like a safety feature of the printer itself. Okay, so I'm on the, uh, the page there, and I, it says raise 3D N2 Plus, and then it's got, I guess, the ID for it, and that's all yep. it needs to show? Yep, and then you're going to click on that arrow next to it, right? Okay. And then it should say connecting, and then it's going to pull up this kind of screen that you see here. Yes. Awesome. So yeah, that's that's set up. That's good to go. So we're we're ready for that. And so this is kind of the same thing as the screen that's on the front display of the Raise 3D. Um, and it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Okay. So we can go ahead and move on to the next section now that we have our printer connected and we're good to go on that form, right? Okay. So I'm gonna close that real fast, and then if we hit Start here, or we can also hit this I button. So either one, right? We can either hit Start. We can hit this I it's going to pull up a new template, select template window. And so we want to make sure at the printer type, we want to make sure that's a V2 hot end. And you, we're going to use the left extruder. We want 1.75 because we're going to use the PLA filament, right? And so we can choose any of these settings. So these are kind of like pre-copied pre settings and stuff like that. So if you wanted to change a setting or otherwise, you can always grab one of these and you can click on edit or export and you can, create a, you, you can create a duplicate of it and then you can edit the settings and save it as something different. Um, but for, for kind of this tutorial that we're going through, well, let's just go with the standard, right? And so we can kind of see some, some settings that it actually has here. So it tell, it's telling us that the layer height is 0.15 millimeters, which is, which is a decent quality. It's gonna have two shells. So that would mean that it's going to be a 0 0.8 shell thickness because what shells basically means is whatever your nozzle size is, multiply that shell number by it, and that's, that's what it's gonna be. So we have 0 0.4 nozzles on this, and so it's going to be 0 0.8 shell thickness, or how, how thick the outside of the model and the bottom and top will be. Then we're gonna have our fill density here, and so it's gonna be a 10% fill density, and then the infill speed, or how fast it's going to do that, is gonna be a little bit above our print speed, so it's gonna be 70 millimeters per second. So let's go ahead and click on this one, and then we want to go over here to the right, and we want to click on Edit. And so this is going to pull up kind of the template page and all those base kind of things. So it's going to say she uh, shells, it's going to say fill density. So in this case, we're, we don't necessarily need a raft, so we can go ahead and say skirt only, depending upon what kind of model you're printing. In this small model that we have in here, we don't need a raft for it. Uh, we, we shouldn't have to have one. 
uh, it should print it pretty well by itself. So we're gonna we're gonna do skirt only, and then we can select the support type if we need it, and let's just select none. So uh, we won't need the support because we have it rotated in a good direction, right? All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and click on advanced. And so this is really the only thing that you have to change in here. You, you can change these as you would like to, uh, but, but we only have to change things in cooling. So we can kind of talk about these settings if you want to. These are very similar settings to what we went through in Cura. Um, so some of them should look very similar, like you know the nozzle diameter is 0.4, our printing speed's at 50 millimeters per second, uh, out, inner shell speed you know, is a little bit slower, outer shell speed, so on and so forth. Um, and then it's gonna have our specific extruders, skirt and brims, and first layer settings. And then we can check in infill, it's gonna have the same kind of stuff, it's gonna be speed and how much it does it and the flow rate percentage for it. And same type of stuff with support, it's gonna give you lots and lots of settings that you can edit as you would like to. Uh, so it, it just kind of depends on how comfortable you feel with this kind of stuff and once you get used to printing more and more often, you'll end up fine tuning these settings to what makes you happiest through them. Uh, so if you know if you have any problems with these settings, you can either email us or you can always look at a you can look at Cura because it gives a better description of them rather than what these are. So we're going to go into cooling, and that's the only section we really have to change. And we're going to change uh, two values over here on temperature. So we want to change this bed temperature. We want to change it to a value of 50 degrees Celsius. And then we want to change this left extruder. We want to make it 220 degrees because that's what our PLA prints at, if you remember from the previous A5 training. Okay, now on, on that, um, I, I put in the uh, PLA that raised 3D scent. Do I need to change that? Um, so you can use it at 220, and, and you can also use it at 210. I think it, it'll print just as well at 220. Okay. So for the sake of this, because if you're using our filament, we recommend using 220, and I'm sure their filament is going to print just as well with it. If okay. it's like it, it, it's kind of making spatial looks, or it's it's not quite coming out at the right print, then you can always come back into here and change that degree setting by about five or ten. Okay. Okay. And then the red extruder, we might as well change that while we're in here, and we'll change that to 220 also. Okay. And then that's it. That's all we have to change. So we can go ahead and click OK and. We can click either save as if you want to create a separate template or we can just save and close. Okay. To remember on that, if I click here on this high quality and then I go to edit again and I check those settings, I believe those settings are going to be different. So we have to change that for every profile that's in here, right? Okay. So if we want to use these generic profiles, we're going to have to change those settings inside of it. Okay. So you'd go through the same process, of clicking on it, click edit, Make sure everything here is what you want. So raft, we don't really want to raft. We want to we want to skirt. So skirt only, and then you'd click on advanced, and you'd go to cooling, and then you're going to change the bed temperature up and the extruder temperature. Okay. Okay. You feel comfortable with that? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, and I'm going to save and close that. All right. So we should be good. All right. So that that's kind of just touching base on the settings that we're going through and a little bit about what we needed to save as. Um, so pretty much all we have to do now is we have to tell it to slice, right? So once we have the setting we want, so let's go back to the standard. I need to click on it because that's the one that we changed and we have it ready. And we're gonna click on slice down here in the bottom right. And so it immediately slices, it has it finished, and then it basically says either export or upload, right? And so what we're gonna do, so it has a Print time of one hour, 12 minutes, 36 seconds. It gives you a price and everything determined upon PLA, which is the material we use. And we can click on upload and then it'll choose the printer that we already have on our wireless connection. And then you can go ahead and say upload. And then it'll send that data file over to it. And we can kind of close out of this installation too. Cool. And so it updated the queue, right? So it, it prints in queues. So this is going to be available now on our printer. Okay. Did you get that far with me? Yes, I think so. And so you can download this STL file and you can do it the same way. You can you can put a USB into the Race 3D or you can put an SD card if you wanted something like that. And it's the same kind of process that we use for Cura to select print from SD.
Okay. You could do either way. So like if you have students that want to print on this and they've been comfortable with other stuff and you know that they can work it, then you can tell them, hey, put that file on an SD card and come plug it in. We can use it from there. Okay. Rather than giving them the connection to the Wi-Fi printer so they, do, they don't keep uploading a whole bunch of stuff. Right. All right. So we have, we have the queue, right? And so now that we, we pretty much sliced, sliced the file as we needed, and so the next portion is pretty much just going through and making sure that everything's working with our printer, right? So if you have the printer on and it should be plugged in and it should be charging kind of like we did earlier, right? So, and it goes through a boot up sequence when you first plug it in and turn it on. And then we wanna try and make sure that the voltage of the battery is getting around to 3.94 volts before we really start using it a whole bunch. We just wanna make sure that backup battery is charged. And so for this first case, since it's kinda of like the first print, I think it'll be all right and we'll be able to go through it. Uh, I just wanted to double check with you that it is charging. Yes, yep. Okay. So I'm gonna close out of uh, Idea Maker there. And then now we, we, we have to go through the process of loading the filament. And so you have that, you have it all the way towards where it needs to be. And uh -huh. I'm gonna stop screen sharing here. And so you can see me again. And so if you wanna check the, sorry, I'm a little bit jumpy over here, but if you wanna check this setting for what the, the excuse me, what the power the battery's at, so you can kind of tell like what voltage it is. So we're going to, this is just the home screen. And since it's printing something that has all this information, we're gonna click up here. We're gonna click on other, and then you'll see right here, it says battery. Okay, cool. And that's pretty easy to notice. And so that was just the setting cog, and then we're gonna click on other, and it's gonna show us the battery voltage. So you want it anywhere from about 3.9 to 4 volts means it's pretty much fully charged and at 100%. And that's okay. mine is at 3.3 right now. That's awesome. Just as long as it's charging, we should we should be good. Okay. Okay. And so you can adjust brightness here if you want the screen to be brighter, so on and so forth. Okay. So the next process is we're actually going to go over here and we're going to click on utilities. And so here in utilities, it gives us a whole bunch of different information, and basically it's telling us, you know. We can home it, we can move the X and Y, we can move the Z up and down, right? And then we can also move the extruder. So um, what we're going to want to do is, so the extruder is going to move kind of like this, and we can kind of put it in each direction. Ooh, this print's kind of shaking. So what we're going to want to do is we, we want to load the left nozzle, right? Okay. So what I want you to do is you can go ahead and press load. And it's going to give you instructions on the screen to continue through loading it. Okay, so you should be able to click load and it, it'll guide you through it on the, on the printer itself. Okay, it's going. Okay. Since we're kind of already printing, I don't really want to do that. Um, that might stop something here. Uh, so you, you got that loaded, it, it was good? Yes, it's, uh, I hit load, right now it's bringing the temperature up. Okay, cool, yeah, it's just gonna bring the temperature up and then it's gonna try and feed it through. So it's, it's gonna be that pre-first load, kind of like we did with the A5s where we preheat PLA and then we, we push it through. And that's okay. what we're right now. So just let me know when that, when that is just about done and we'll continue on. Um, so the next part that we're gonna do is we're going to actually be leveling the build plate. And so I just wanna make sure that you have this little piece right here, and what this is, is it's actually a 0.2 little, you know, distance. So this is 200 microns, and this is how we're gonna level the build plate. Okay, yep, I have that. Awesome, okay, so that'll be, that'll be the next step here that we go with. And you did adjust the Z axis, uh, the Z axis limit switch, right? We, we made it at least a bit taller. Yes, that little, uh, you're talking about turning the screw, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing that we're going to end up adjusting here in a moment in order to make sure that it's level. Yes, I did that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just, uh, we'll just wait until yours is loaded and ready to go. And so it should still be kind of working through that if it's not done heating quite yet.
Okay, I've hit load. Okay. So I'll just feed that in now a little bit. It should do it for you. Once it once you have it next to that gear, it should push the gear through for you. Okay, there it goes. Yeah. I hadn't pushed it quite enough. Yeah, it should grab it itself and then it'll pull it through and make sure that it extrudes. So did that work out? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so if we got it loaded and you feel comfortable with it being loaded, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do, we're gonna go home on X, Y, E, and Z. So first, um, make sure, you know, none of the clips or anything are in it, and then I want you to click right here on this home button for X, Y. Okay. And then it's gonna, it's gonna move it over to probably zero, zero over here in the, front left, probably in the front left corner. So if you, oh, you oh, hit the, I, I hit the home button, right? Yeah, yeah, the little home, yeah. Just hit the house and then it's gonna bring it to zero Y and zero X. And then after that, we'll tell it to go to zero Z. We'll just do, we'll do the uh, X, Y first. And it will most likely end up in a position right here. Okay. Did it move? Is it good? Yes, it's moved it over to a, the back okay. corner. Okay. So the back corner? Or front corner. The oh, one this corner by the front. This yes, one? Yes, yes. All right, cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do, since we kind of moved that, that knob on the inside a little bit earlier, we're going to go ahead and hit Home Z. And you'll notice that it pulls it. It'll pull this build plate all the way up until it touches that, right? So it'll pull the build plate. Once you hit home Z, it's gonna pull this build, this entire thing, it's gonna lift it all the way up until this comes into contact with the limit switch and pushes it down. And so you can watch it do that as it kind of goes through it. And then the next piece, we're going to actually use our little, uh, our little uh, spacer here in order to adjust it. So did it get to zero? It's on its way. Okay, yeah. It, the Z-axis always takes a much longer time. And so here on the screen, just to give you another little information, this, this extruder here where it says L and R, what that's gonna do is it's actually going to pull the filament through. So like if you wanted to pull filament through just by itself to extrude some or something, you would click down on this extruder here and it would actually extrude extra plastic for you. So that's, that's what that one is. So what do you think of the base 3D? It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Oh, it's it's uh, it's uh, amazing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's something else, right? All right. So just let me know when we kind of get done with that. And then these are generally quite leveled already. Um, so, so we should only have to touch it just slightly and move it just a small bit in order to finish it. Um, so we, we kind of, you probably got some hex keys that came with it. We like to attach our hex keys up here in the top and we just use like some sticky tape or, sticky tape or uh, uh, some Velcro to put it up there. And it, we feel like it's a little bit of a better spot than like in the middle of the door, like kind of put it together first. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's the limit switch. Cool, so I hit the limit switch and it's good. Okay, yes. next point is now that we have the uh, we should have the nozzles right about here, right? Yes. And now we're going to take this and we're going to slide this under there. We want to make sure that this is the only tolerance in between that and the build plate. So we would take this and we would put it underneath the nozzle and slide it in between. If you feel like it's too far and it's not touching it at all or it's not just enough to slide it through, so we want a very small, this is basically the entire space that we're going to have. The build. Yeah. Mine has quite a bit of space. Yeah, that's because we adjusted this limit switch. So what we're right. going to do is we're going to, you know, adjust it just a little bit and turn it so it moves down. 
And then once you click auto home on the Z again, then it's gonna move up a little bit more until it hits that limit switch one more time. And so we're gonna go through that process until we can only fit this point two through there, and then we're gonna stop and we're not gonna adjust. So we just want it just close enough to where this slides in between it. And that's gonna be, it's, it's a little tedious to get to because you, you don't want it to go too far, you don't wanna to push too far into the middle plate, and you know, we don't want it too far away. So it's, it's kind of a process of just going through that until we get it at that sweet spot. Okay, I think I have it. Okay, so you think you think it's good? You you feel comfortable with it? That distance between the two? I think so. Um, my nozzle is not right over the top of the belt plate. Yeah. Is that is that normal? If you do want to adjust that and you want to make sure that it is perfect, what what we can do is we can actually come in here and you know how we have the move axis and stuff. So if we go to utilities and then up here it says move steps right here. Uh huh. We can click on one millimeter and then we can tell it to move in on the Y and move in on the X just slightly in order to get it over our build plate. And just get it just close enough because we, you know, we, we were kind of leveling it where it was. And if you feel like it might hit the build plate, just stop and, and adjust that Z limit switch. And move it back over the build plate and kind of test it and see if it's good. And make sure that the Z here on this utilities menu does say zero. And it should since we homed it.
And so you may have to fine tune this kind of after you print the first time. And if it, if it looks like it's too far away or if it's too close, you know, that's just going to be a barely little twitch of that limit switch, moving that knob up and down in order to give it that perfect tolerance that it's wanting. And that's just something you'll get used to as you, as you print more. And you said that we they did need to contact one another, right? I'm sorry. The uh, the little the little measuring gauge, it should have some little bit of tension between the yes. belt plate nozzle. Yes, it'll have just a little bit of tension, telling us that it is exactly point two. Yeah. It should just barely fly between them. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, cool. So I, I want to cover like one more thing and we're just covering the tune tab here. So whenever it's printing or otherwise, you can always decide to select different options. So you could select the nozzle temperatures for left and right. You can select the heat bed temperature so you can almost preheat the bed, uh, how much is feeding, the fan speed and so on and so forth. So this is kind of like, you know, you can tune this while it's printing and you can al also tune this before. So Okay, so on mine, it's not showing the adjust 220, it's showing 215. It's on showing what? Like we changed it to 220. Yeah. And it's showing 215. Yeah, that's because like here in utilities, when we hit load, it loads it at 215. Okay, okay. If you wanted to change that, you could just hit up here and go to 220 degrees when you load filament and that, that'll actually give you the 220 on that menu. Okay, okay. Cool. All right, yep. so now we have a level, we have a setup and we have our file on there. So let's click on this print. And then you should see your V2 hot end within this, right? So the file that we sent to it, do you see that file? I do. All right, and then all you have to do is click on that and it should start for you. So it's kind of gonna go through the same process that the other ones do. It's gonna make sure that everything's preheated then it's gonna go home it's going to extrude some and it's going to actually extrude it off the plate so that when it moves back over the plate and knocks it off and then it'll start printing. So you'll end up with a whole bunch of strings like, like this one here. Okay. Yeah. It'll, it'll extrude about that much. Like uh, if you can, if you can see that uh -huh. pretty long string of filament before it starts the print. And it does that for kind of like, measures to make sure the colors change and that sort of thing so that you're getting a good quality print. So did it, did it start working for you? Uh, it's uh, heating the bed right now. Okay, yeah. So heating the bed does take a little bit of a while. It's just going to it's gonna probably do that for a little bit and I will stay on the line with you until we make sure that it's printing and ready to go. Uh, so for this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording now. So.